York supposed to Miami this week? Yeah. While well, Al pays a strategic visit to Miami's district attorney, thus setting up an ironclad alibi for himself, his pal and favorite hitman, Machine Gun Jack Ernie, sets into motion the wheels of the crime that will forever define Chicago in the imagination of the world. In retaliation for the almost fatal attack against his idol and predecessor, Johnny Torrio, constant hijacking from his liquor trucks and repeated attempts against his own life, Al Capone decides that Bugs Moran and his gang must be eliminated. Tricked by a member of Detroit's Purple Gang, who was secretly working for Al, Bugs and his gang were to pick up a shipment of hijacked old log cabin whiskey at the SMC Cartage Company, 2122 North Clark Street, a garage owned by Adam Hyatt, one of the North Side gangsters. It was bitterly cold at 10.30 a.m. when the North Side mob began to arrive at the scene. First to arrive was John May, a safe cracker, who was also the gang's chief mechanic who kept the trucks rolling. Next came the Rosenberg brothers, Frank and Peter, burglars, train robbers, and sluggers for the Moran gang. Next, another gunman, Jim Cashelon, Moran's brother-in-law. And a higher arrived, racketeer and owner of the garage, along with Al Langshank, who was director of the speakeasies for the North Side gang. Finally, and most tragically, Dr. Reinhard Schwimmer, an optometrist, stopped by to visit with the boys. Schwimmer was no gangster himself, but enjoyed basking in the glory of his notorious cronies' exploits. He would pay the ultimate price for his infatuation with the monsters. At 10.50 a.m., a black packer pulled up to the curb, and four men were seen entering the garage, two of which appeared to be Chicago policemen. They burst in upon their unsuspecting victims, guns drawn and shouting. All right, boys. I'm going to get you all. Let's get some guns. Don't give us any trouble. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Schwimmer, what are you doing? Happy Valentine's Day, boys. From Al Capone. <laughs> In seconds, the deed was done. As the seven men lay dead and dying, the counterfeit policemen put their guns in the backs of their pals, who raised their hands as if being arrested, walked to the waiting sedan, and drove away. Bugs Moran, the attorney victim, was late for the rendezvous, escaped harm, only to die penniless in Leavenworth Prison. No one was ever convicted for their part in the crime that half the beer wars in Chicago and captured the attention of the nation. The bloody Valentine sent by Al Capone to Bugs Moran. Ladies and gentlemen, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre.